Jesus came forward and addressed them in these words. Go and make disciples of all nations. Go and teach all people my gospel. I am with you until the end of the world. Get up and go. Nearly 200 years ago, a handful of Vincentian priests and brothers were asked to leave their homes in Italy and bring the gospel to the New World. Fathers Joseph Rosati and Felix de Andres and their companions responded to the missionary impulse and came to the worlds of America at the invitation of Bishop Ruiz de Bug. Their service in the barrens of southeast Missouri came at a sacrifice of resources. Reluctant at first to commit valuable men to the mission field, the Vincentians of the Italian province ultimately agreed to free and support them for the American mission. Because of their response, the church in the United States grew from river banks of the Mississippi and spread throughout the United States. Today, the invitation for mission and the willingness to go live on in the Vincentian priests and brothers of the Western province. In 1979, an Italian missionary priest in Kenya, acting on behalf of the first bishop of Marsabit, brought a similar request to the congregation of the mission. Ironically, the request this time was from the Italians, now asking the descendants of their early missions, the U.S. Western Province, to respond and go. The invitation was simple. The Catholic Church in Kenya needed seminary teachers to form Kenyan priests among the pastoralist tribes for a major seminary in Madalal. With a rich history in forming priests in the United States, the request quickly found its way to the U.S. Western Province. The call to mission was clear. Now it was time for the American province to respond as their founders responded nearly 200 years earlier in 1818. It was time to get up and go. After discussion with its members, the American Vincentians responded with personnel and funds. With little certain other than they were leaving their homes, the first group of American Vincentians to serve in Kenya was called and sent. The newly retired Superior General, Father James Richardson, Father Patrick O'Brien, and Brother Paul Joseph were missioned by the Archbishop of St. Louis John L. May, in December 1980. The next day, these men left for the plains of Maralal in northern Kenya to form Kenyan priests who would eventually serve their fellow nomads and shepherds. As they left their homes, they carried the concerns of the province and of the uncertainty of their readiness but they also carried the Vincentian reliance on divine providence and trusted in the gospel promise of hope. These men got up and went. In 
In Maralal, these three men from another world found themselves welcomed by the Catholic Church that was growing beyond all imagination. The need for leaders in church far outpaced the ability of the missioners and local diocesan church officials. In response to this unprecedented demand, Bishop Cavalera of Maralal and then Father Vigilio Pante continued construction on what was quickly becoming a large mission center in the diocese. The complex in Maralal where the Vincentians would teach included a parish church, a girls' school to be directed by the Italian sisters of the Consolata congregation, a catechist training school, a minor seminary, and the major seminary, Good Shepherd. They arrived in Maralal and learned of the Kenyan culture amidst the frenzy of construction and made do while construction of the major seminary Good Shepherd was completed. Bishop Cavalera's vision and dream followed by the wonderful leadership of Bishop Ambrose Ravazzi, both were exemplary and definitive. They never wavered from the desire to fashion a curriculum focused on the needs of the candidates and the people they would serve. Along with this resolve, Bishops Cavalera and Ravazzi, somewhat like St. Vincent himself, was to have both faculty and students of the seminary assist in the 19 mission posts throughout the Diocese of Marlow. In the midst of this vision, the Vincentians of the Western Province found themselves forming clergy and giving missions to rural outposts. The parallels to the founding of the community in the 17th century, it was unmistakable. When construction was completed on Good Shepherd Seminary, the needs of the apostolate became even more clear for the Vincentians serving in Maralal. Possibilities abounded for Vincentians from the United States and many men from the Western province came to Kenya to volunteer for teaching duties in the seminary. They came to teach in the seminary and to preach missions in the outposts. These volunteers were a blessing, easing the pressures of the resident faculty and allowing them the time to develop new curricula to meet the demands of the growing church. While the volunteers provided invaluable assistance, the growing demands of the church precipitated the call for permanent teachers in Kenya. This growing need, however, paralleled the growing problem in the U.S., a diminishing supply of prospective teaching missionaries. In fact, from the time that the first three missionaries were sent from St. Louis in 1980, over the next six years, only two additional Vincentians from the U.S. were sent. Father Ted Wisner arrived in summer of 1984, and Father Bob Wood arrived in August 1986. These two men were valuable additions to the Vincentians in Marillau. Father Wiesner was preparing to succeed Father O'Brien as the seminary rector in 1989, but it was not to be. In May of 1987, only three years after arriving to teach in Marillau, Father Wiesner died of hepatitis and was buried in a small plot in the desert plains of Marillau in northern Kenya. Father Wieser's death shook the very core of the Vincentians' commitment to Kenya. By the time of their loss, 
their resources were diminished. Father Richardson had been reassigned to the United States in January of 1987, and Brother Paul Joseph had also returned to the United States several years earlier. With Father Wiesner's death, the remaining permanent Vincentian missioners in Kenya were reduced to two, Fathers O'Brien and Wood. The Vincentians' resounding commitment to the Kenyan missions would soon be tested. Father Wood was reappointed to Good Shepherd Seminary in Maralal, and Father O'Brien began working as director of the library at the Catholic University of East Africa in Nairobi. Although he found the work congenial, Father O'Brien soon fell into poor health and returned to the United States for surgery. During his recovery, Father O'Brien and the congregation decided he would not return to the missions in Kenya. Father Wood remained alone in Kenya to keep the province's commitment and to continue the much-needed work of the congregation. Then, in 1990, Father Frank Gatos, a veteran of priestly formation and education, arrived to teach with Father Wood and the rest of the staff at Good Shepherd in Madalao. Now, with the Vincentian commitment to Kenya beginning to rebound after the death of Father Wiesner, Bishop Ravazzi of Madalao began to face the inevitable. Time was running out for Good Shepherd Seminary, to continue operation as an independent institution. With consultation with the Vincentians and the provincial John Gangpan, Bishop Ravazzi faced the desert reality of northern Kenya and decided to close the seminary in Marilow by December 1991. In the midst of these critical decisions and difficult transitions, the missioners trust in God's providence and hope in the church remained strong. As almost a herald of things to come, Father Wood wrote on the occasion of closing of the Good Shepherd Seminary, We may very well be faced in the near future with another issue, the decision of whether or not to open an officiate of our own community in Kenya. Under the leadership of Provincial Father John Gangpan, Fathers Wood and Gatos were commissioned to explore the possible alternative seminaries in Kenya that would be suitable for the seminarians of the Marsabet Diocese. Of the three seminaries explored, Bishop Ravazzi's choice fell on Christ the King Seminary in Neri. The Western Vincentians of the United States continued to strengthen their commitment to the Church of Kenya. In August 1993, Father Tom O'Hearn was sent as a spiritual director and teacher of homiletics. Father O'Hearn's addition to the Vincentians in Kenya also allowed the congregation to offer ongoing formation sessions to the priests of Marsabit, thus continuing the ongoing formation work that the missionaries had done since their arrival in Maralal, some 13 years earlier. Now, within only five years of their recommitment to the mission in Kenya, the Vincentians were once again beginning to experience the joy of a missionary call to get up and go. <laughs> In August 1996, Father Barry Muriati moved from Chicago to join Fathers Wood and Giddos in teaching at Christ the King Seminary 
and to explore the possibility for the recruitment and formation of native Kenyans for the Vincentian priesthood and brotherhood. To that end, he left Christ the King and joined with Father Ohan to continue the research already begun by Fathers Ohan and Gedos. With this move, the Vincentians now maintained two houses in Kenya, the Teachers as Christ the King in Nyeri and the Developing House of Formation farther south in Nairobi. Only 14 months after the construction began, the new Vincentian House of Formation DePaul Center was completed. By January 2000, only 20 years after the founding missioners accepted the invitation to serve in Kenya, and only 10 years since their commitment and personnel were deeply shaken by loss, the western province of the Congregation of the Mission would be ready to celebrate a new beginning on the African continent. On the feast of the conversion of St. Paul in January 25, 2000, the date celebrated as the foundation of the Congregation of the Mission, Vincentians from around the world gathered to dedicate the New West Formation Center in the Western Province. The Paul Center was a reality. As one participant to the celebration recorded in his journal, it was a beautiful day in this area, so near the equator. Strong sun in the blue sky, a large gathering of friends, dancers. The local choir of St. Peter Claver Parish, seminarians, native clergy. The auxiliary bishop designate of Nairobi, David Kamau, as the celebrant. The Superior General of the Vincentians, Father Bob Maloney, as preacher. For the Bill Hartenbach, the Provincial of the West, and six Western Vincentians who had given their ministry and their lives to Eastern Africa. Active in the procession around the grounds as well as during the Mass were the children of Imara Daima Parish. And St. Peter Claver's choir sang, May the blessing of the Lord come down, come down. At the conclusion of the Mass, Father Barry Moriarty, another good shepherd, the Superior of DePaul Center, thanked all those who were responsible for the site, the buildings, and the dedication ceremony. And Bishop Ravazzi, supporter of the province since the beginning, afforded some comments himself. He talked of Father Jim Richardson, of Father Patrick O'Brien, a workaholic, but a good workaholic, and of Father Ted Wiesner, who died too early. As the Superior General, Father Maloney observed during his homily, the missionary impulse is dynamic and is always pushing to new challenges. Vincent, he said, loved Christ the missionary. Vincent heard him saying, Go, go into the whole world and proclaim the good news to all creation. And so he wanted his missionaries to go everywhere. In his own lifetime, he sent them not only throughout France, but also to Poland, Italy, Algeria, Madagascar, Ireland, Scotland, the Hebrides, 
and the Orkneys. Vincent himself, in his old age, longed to set out for the Indies. He heard Christ, the missionary of the Father, telling him that his mission was worldwide. The worldwide missionary call of the gospel continues to this day. And just as the original Italian Vincentians responded to the invitation to bring the Vincentian charism to a new world nearly 200 years ago, so too the descendants of that mission have responded to the invitation from Africa to bring the Vincentian charism into another new world. Perhaps someday the Vincentian mission in Kenya might launch its own missionary enterprise to other lands and other peoples yet unknown. Someday, these men too will get up and go.